how do we compute the inverse? So in 8.5, when we get there, if you get the determinant not equal to zero, your matrix has an inverse. Uh, for now, we're just going to try to get the inverse, and if we succeed, then it's invertible. Um, the problem with uh, if we don't exceed, succeed, then it's not invertible means uh, maybe we didn't have enough skill or patience to uh, find the inverse. Uh, but we're going to, I, you can go up to 8.5 and read about the determinant and, and then come back here. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and try to compute them and see how do we compute them. We're going to augment the matrix A with the identity. So we're going to write the matrix A as the first a few columns. And then whatever dimension A is, we're going to put the identity matrix of the same dimension in there. We're going to do row operations. So we get the identity matrix here, which is a row reduced echelon form matrix. And everything left over is A inverse. If you can't get the identity here, most likely you can, uh, matrix A does not have an inverse. So this matrix is invertible. I took uh, a matrix that has a really nice inverse. Most matrix inverses will have fractions all over the place. So in general, uh, if you go anywhere past a two by two, you're gonna have fractions all over the place. So we're gonna go ahead and find the inverse of this matrix. So what we're gonna do is write down B with the identity matrix. And this identity matrix is the uh, two by two matrix. So we're going to be doing a row operations. Which operations do we need to do? We need to, let's see. It looks like we might be getting into some fractions here. So what I'm going to do is work really hard to avoid fractions. I'm going to take two of these negative fives and add them up to this 12. We have two row two, and then add it to 12. So 10, negative 10 plus 12 is two. Six minus seven, we got six minus seven is negative one. One, two. So why did I do that? Well, that made 12 into a two. It's a lot smaller. Now I can take two, and if I add two of these to negative five, I'll have negative one, and then I will be, uh, I can use that negative one to knock out the two. I could also shift gears and look at column two because in one move, I can turn this into a zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take three row ones to knock out that. So we have two, negative one, one, two, and then three times two is six minus five. Ah, it's positive one and zero and three, six plus one, seven. All right, so we're doing pretty good. We're gonna use that one to knock out the two. So we're going to go minus two, row two. So we have zero, negative one, negative six plus one is negative five. And negative five and last, negative 14 plus two is negative 12. All right, so we're almost there. We need a row swap and then multiply by negative one. So here is our row swap. One, zero, three, seven, zero, negative one, negative five, negative 12, and then multiply by negative one. And we're gonna end up with three, seven, five, 12. So we think B inverse should be three, seven, five, 12. We're gonna check 
what should I get when I multiply? Let me do the check over here. We should be getting the identity equals b times b inverse. Also would be equal to b inverse times b. I'm only going to go uh, one of these two. If one of them works out, uh, the other one is pretty much guaranteed to work out. So I'm only going to go b, b inverse. We're going across and down. And we have 12. Now I'm just going to use my finger here to block that out. So 12 times 3 is 36 minus 35. Now moving over here, 12 times 7 is a lot. 70, 84. Negative 7 times 12. Ah, negative 84. Sounds good. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. 3 times 5, positive 15. And last up, uh, negative 35. 7, negative 35. And 3 times 12 is 36. So those are zeros. 36 minus 35 and negative 35 plus 36. And we get our identity matrix right there. Now, generally, you're going to have fractions. Uh, I carefully chose an example to avoid fractions.